All right, good morning. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> walk you through how to modify the uh, provided program in 142, which allows you to uh, display arrays in, um, in Python. The arrays of the images, uh, well, for the purpose of the video, I'll use the stock images they ask you to use, which are the woman.jpg and the cat1a.gif. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, you can see I have the previous IPython session from the previous um, uh, video that I made for 138 on here as well. And uh, we're gonna just go ahead and just you know keep scrolling with that. So here's the deal. We have over here, uh, this is part four. So this starts on number, um, what is the number item here I see? I believe it's number, yep, number nine. It starts on number nine. So uh, anything before this basically uses the same code, but it's understanding how objects work. Um, so as a reminder, uh, calling subplots 1, 1 returns a tuple of two objects, figure and axis subplot. The method subplots can be used to create a grid of axis subplots as shown below. In this case, subplots 1, comma, n will return an array of axis subplots. In other words, think of it as if we make this line right here something different than 1, 1, we're going to have an array of plots on here using the figure that we, are, we that we will call uh, in this case would be woman.jpg when when we later load that uh, and the axis subplots of course would be would be up to uh, as many as we throw on there so if we put one to one comma two it'll be two of them one comma five would be five of them and so forth okay show the image data in the subplot now um, what we want to do in this part, uh, part here is modify lines 18 and 20 uh, which in, in mine are 19 and 21 uh, because when I saved the program it added in this line I, and uh, that's kind of required. I don't know why I'm not sure why it required but so be it. Uh, we want to modify it so that it matches what is shown above. So in other words we want to take line 19 and make it one dot one comma two as it says here and we want to take line um, 20 uh, 19 and 21 sorry um, we want to take in this case line 21 and we want to make it ax dot uh, sorry bracket zero now reason we do that is because now we have two uh, ax objects we have and it's in an array and we call arrays just the same way we call elements in a string by using brackets so the zero would be the first element the first uh, element in the array and then the uh, if we put a one here it would be the second element in the array uh, which will come up in just a second so in this case, modify lines 18 and 20 of your code to match what is shown above you. will have to re-execute the code to see the effect. Practice using object-oriented syntax by describing line 22. The method, line 20, this case is 23, the method show is being called on the object fig. Okay, that's, that's the uh, fill in the blanks there for that. So if I run that program, you can see currently uh, we have the woman on one side, but we have nothing on the other side. So how do we get something into the other side? Well, the next problem asks us to actually modify the code to create the following figures. Now remember, here's the technique. That first image showed up in the left side because I called for that image to be shown here, right? If I want the image to show on the right side, I actually can use a very similar line of code, but instead of a zero, I'm gonna use a one to call in the other element of that array. And I'll use the same um, parameters, or arguments, I should say. Of, the, of the show. So remember, show takes two arguments. Actually, show actually takes more than two arguments, but the default arguments are, are uh, beyond what we would normally uh, need to worry about for this for this particular activity. However, of course, the first argument is what image do you want to have shown? So in this case, img, that's the one that we read from the file name over here that we used on the imread procedure in the plt class, which is the pyplot or matplotlib. So anyway, slight digression. Okay, so when I run this program now, watch what happens. Because I added in that second line, AX1, it loaded the image in the right side now. I, if I really wanted to, I could even have it read two different file names if I want to, and then have one show here, one show here. Uh, again, not purpose of the activity, but just so you know, it is possible. Part two asks us to iterate, to iterate images of a picture such as the cat, right? Well, uh, the cat, and I want to just double check the file name on the cat here. I'm going to go to open real quick and just go to cat, it's cat one a Okay, perfect. So I'm going to switch the, uh, and it's a GIF if I remember correctly, cat one a dot GIF, right, to call on that image. And if I want to put a different image in there, I can. And because I want it to show up five times, how, what do, I to, what do I have to do? I have to change the subplot argument for the array to five, so five of the images show up. And then what I'm gonna do is just to kind of simplify my, uh, my, my time, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut and paste 
this line of code four times, and then just go over to the bracket and edit oops, each one of those to the same way, right? So when I run this program, what should I expect? I should expect five images in five different subplots because I asked for five different subplots. And when I run the program, that's what I get. Perfect. Okay, exactly what they wanted. Now, continuing, part five. The imshow method was called on axis subplots below. For the axis on the left, method was called interpolation none, where the axis on the right, interpolation uh, was provided in the argument. So we're going to go ahead and copy the code here that is provided starting at line, um, well, really, yeah, line 12 is really the first one we need, just because it's going to be calling the image. In this case, again, for me, it's line 13. And if I just kind of cut and paste, right, I would get this bit of information. Now, watch this. When I run this program, it gives me the image that is on the screenshot, okay? The one on the left has interpolation. The one on the right does not. So can you see the difference between interpolation and non-interpolation? Remember in mathematics, interpolation is determining where a value is between two other values. When you zoom in on an image, you're going to get what's called pixelation. And that's what you can see on the right side. Uh, the right side has you know, individual pixels. The image is so far zoomed in that you're going to see individual pixels. But what interpolation does is it tries to approximate where the differences in colors are and make it look a lot smoother. So it's the same effect that most computer games also use when it comes to something that's really close to the screen. So interpolation is on for the left, off for the right. Now, the matplotlib will normally interpolate between values, but if we tell it not to, right. So that's what that says. Now, there's other options on here that we can, that we can actually try on uh, either of these, right? And uh, this is your first uh, introduction to a, a term called API, which is, stands for Application Programming Interface. So there's a few other things that we can modify about each of the subplots that would allow us to um, change the way it's displayed. And we also could have that happen live. So we have this particular figure um, here, and I can actually sort of use the IPython editor and make this change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. And I'm going to, so that way you can see what I'm doing, I just want to put that, scroll that here, and then just make this a little smaller. There we go. OK. So for example, if I want to, I can go to AX0, which is the one on the left, right? Dot, let's um, see if I haven't typed this incorrectly, axis, right? And I'm going to go ahead and set that to off close parentheses. Watch what happens. When I run that, okay, actually it's giving me the information on here. Um, and then if I were to redisplay this uh, using fig.show, do I get another window? Aww. No, I don't. Okay. AX01, show hide the axis and their titles or ticks. Documentation showing you either on or off. And I'm just trying to do this live right now. I know. Um, what did I forget to do? What did I forget to do? Did I, oh, I know why I forgot to do. I forgot to tell it to show it on there. ax 0 image. And then I would do fig.show. No, that's not what it did. That's not what it was either. Rats. OK. I tried to do that on here. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Um, trying to say, okay, what if I do this? What if I do the, uh, what if I set a title? Let's try to set a title. AX flat bracket zero dot set X label. And what do I want to set it? X label, okay. Horizontal, just to change it up. Oops, I, I forgot to finish that, of course. Okay, there we go. Now let's try that. AX zero dot im show dot image. And then if fig dot show. Let's see if I. What if I just do this? Let's try to run it like that. No, it doesn't label it. Hmm. Uh, I'm doing something wrong. And I'm not entirely sure what it is. Okay. After I do you do the update figure with the canvas draw method. Canvas dot draw method. That's what I forgot to do. And then if I go back to the image, yep, there it is, OK? So I got the axes to hide. But remember how I typed in that label? Well, because the axes are hidden, it's not showing that label. So if I want the axes back, I can do that again. I can just go basically to AX bracket 0 dot uh, axis, 
and then set it to on. Okay, run that, and then use that fig canvas draw, and then there it is, right? There's the text I had, there's the labels, right? The labels are back, and it works out nicely. So a couple of ways to do that. So don't forget that when you're trying these <coughs> methods, and you, can, you don't have to try just the ones I did, of course, but when you're trying these methods, and you're saying, oh, it didn't work. Don't forget, you have to throw like fig.canvas.draw, which is what I forgot it the first time, right? So anyway, uh, there's a few other things you're going to have to do in this particular one. So I'm going to stop the video at this point. I think you've got all the uh, information you need. Uh, check this one out, though, when you get to number 13. There are a couple of things where you get to place some drawings on there, which is kind of cool. So anyway, uh, that's it. Have a nice day.